Welcome to our next instalment in the Connecting Well Apart series of interviews with our brilliant uh, community members. Today we have Helen Jersevic from the Women's Friendship Group. Yeah, we're going to learn a little bit about Helen and the Friendship Group um, and what they've been doing during COVID and um, coming out of COVID as well. So Helen, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm well, thank you, Owen. Thank you for this opportunity too. Oh, it's brilliant. Um, it's lovely having you. So, Helen, how's COVID and the restrictions um, changed for the friendship group and the and the community you find yourself in daily? Owen, it has had a dramatic change on seniors. Interestingly, when uh, Premier initially um, spoke about people working from home, the outcry was, oh, goodness me, isolation. What's that going to be like? And I really did want to ring in and say, welcome to a senior's world. Yeah. And thinking that maybe, just maybe, it might resonate with some people what it's like to be locked away at home. The friendship group was formed initially to bring women out of social and cultural isolation. I'd say 60% of our women uh, live alone. And to have this um, lockdown, which I believe for health reasons were deemed necessary, but it was a very sad thing and taking a toll on their mental health. Physical health, they were protected from a virus, but their mental health. I think that was highlighted because of media broadcasts and the Premier's broadcast of broadcasting figures. Um, the number of people in hospital, the number of people who were from nursing homes in hospital, and the accentuation on aged, how it affect the aged, and it really put a fear into the into the women. Um, the limitation of having family visit, it, it greatly affected them, and really they they lived in fear, an underlying fear. And socially, sort of to try and bring them out of that, I think is going to be sort of quite difficult. So what did the friendship group do um, while this was happening um, initially and throughout the COVID restrictions, which we've experienced for uh, eight months? We got together, I was very aware of, of, as I said, this social isolation because of so many living alone. You've got, if you had family visiting or you had some social contact, obviously the women joined the friendship group for social interaction. This was stopped. So what I um, put to our committee, and they came on very willingly, was to keep in contact actual if not physical contact, but by way of sending things things through to the women. Firstly, we, we got sort of like a phone roster going. Um, we'd ring different members and then encourage them to ring the members that they had become friends with. So that was one thing. When, um, when we first started in March and, and masks were sort of touted, uh, our sewing group made um, a little cotton mask, 230 little cotton mask, and we posted that with a friendship note to every member, just to say that this is sort of, we're thinking of you, we can't see you, but here's something as a support. Then when winter came was my grave concern because a lot of the women, and they have expressed it at our sewing group, that they come, they spend half a day there um, they're socialising, but they don't have to use their heating, their electricity at home. Mm. And that was a big thing. And even people I've spoken to, people like yourself that have worked from home, have commented the expense of being at home during yeah. winter. So uh, I approached council and asked if they would contact the various energy providers to see if they would give a 50% reduction, not on the usage, but on the actual utility, the um, service charge. Yeah, right. Because you can cut down and not use your electricity, but you'll still have a big service charge. Um, I don't know really, 
sort of what came out of that to a degree, but they did, they did, and I'll give them their due, they did contact the service providers. But what I did was contact, oh, council um, had put out grants for, um, pe for need, you know, people in need. So I applied for a grant, contacted Brandella Knitting Mills, who made, or who supplied us um, long johns and thermal wow. woolen polyester um, tops, long sleeve tops and long johns. So we uh, bought 200 of those uh, sets that was, they're absolutely beautiful. They retailed at, um, I think it was uh, $80, $79.95, and I bought them for $16 a set. Wow, that's an amazing. It was amazing. still. Then for our 14th birthday, which was in September, I had a lovely birthday card printed, a Women's Friendship Group birthday card printed, and we put in a coffee bag, a tea bag, and two chocolates with a note and posted those out. And everyone was to toast us on the 25th of September. <laughs> Seeing we couldn't be together, that was sort of um, going to be our, well, their birthday celebration. Seeing that, you know, with, that was just everything that you've done, everything that you've just mentioned, I reckon you would have had many, many toasts um, towards the Women's Friendship Group. That's, yeah, that's an extraordinary effort. The women benefit so much knowing that they've got this purpose. They've all yep. been sitting at home knitting and crocheting. We have more rugs that we know what to do with, to be honest. Um, but the women have sort of got this purpose of usefulness. Yeah. Um, you might say in, uh, in as a senior in our twilight years that you still can be – still have a great benefit, for the, you know, for the community – and and that someone else is a reciprocant of that, so it's a two a two way thing. I think that's a great a, a great thing to like to acknowledge that within people who are experiencing isolation, mm. to to be able to give a purpose to the to a person that even though they might be physically still isolated, that that mental isolation is 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 cut right back. It is. It is. It's, it, there's still a connection. There's yeah. almost like you could say a physical connection because you're giving something and someone's receiving it. Correct. And the last thing, because we can't have our November Christmas party, um, I've purchased um, whiskey Christmas cakes. They're absolutely superb. So we're rip, wrapping those. And I've had a, a, a gorgeous card, Christmas card, friendship group Christmas card printed. Mm. And... Um, we're delivering those. If you mentioned um, what you're going to continue to do um, to the end of the year, is there mm -hmm. anything else that the Women's Friendship are, are looking forward to doing that are, is going to support um, s seniors and, in particular, senior women out of the COVID or and yeah. and no, into COVID yes. normal? Um, I'm apprehensive to really make concrete plans initially for next year until, say, I hear what's happening at the end of January, mm. maybe February, um, when it's really safe for, for people. Um, when can you say it's safe is another thing. Uh, and I think the women also, because they've had this fear, you might say almost drilled into them, mm. Don't, don't, um, or you must socially distance and, and see, we have about 140, 160 at a meeting. So yeah. how can you, with respect, socially distance unless you've got a huge place? Yeah. Um, a couple of us said, why can't you have just smaller groups? Well, no, there's not, that's, it's all in or none. <laughs> yes. no, how can you select? Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's cruel. That's maybe, really cruel. Maybe I can talk to some of the, government people and we can like hire out Rod Laver Arena or something for the Women's Friendship Group. <laughs> True, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you got that pool? <laughs> the Art Centre or something. Yes, yeah. yeah. So just when COVID, we're still not out of it completely. No. What message would you give to any of um, uh, the senior women if they are feeling unwell and particularly with those symptoms of COVID? Well, I think even regardless of the symptoms of COVID, if you are unwell, because apparently some of them can be masked, you know, you're not absolutely sure whether it is 
they are the symptoms for COVID, I would say definitely, definitely go to your doctor, discuss your symptoms and ask for a test just for peace of mind. Because yep. once people are mixing around in some, fortunately in summertime, apparently it doesn't like the heat as much. Um, that's why overseas, been in winter, they've got such outbreaks overseas now. Um, but yes, I think don't try and diagnose yourself, have I or haven't I, just go to the doctor and get the test. Yeah. I think that personally, to have that peace of mind and even to ask your family members, just, you know, if you're all coming together because seniors are considered the most vulnerable. Yeah. 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 It's still a, it's still a, a, a team effort, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. But also to, yes, to just be aware that these seniors have been locked away and they are fearful. They really are fearful. Um, I know some now that still won't go to a supermarket. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's hard to break habits <laughs> which have been <laughs> entrenched into you kind of through a fear system. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There are there, there are many um unintended consequences that we've experienced oh, through, yes. yeah. through this well, time. It was it was something un the word unprecedented, but we've not known it before. So, you know, in handling it, you do yeah. the best you can. Mm. Yeah. And just to finish, Helen, um, mm -hmm. do you have any other messages that you want to give out to your community or to the broader community? A message, I think, for the broader community is you've seen what it's like to be isolated. So perhaps, especially this time of the year, to extend a hand of friendship, not necessarily a physical hand, but to extend, to be friendly, to, if you're walking along the street, just to nod to someone or smile. It's um, something I'm, as I mentioned to you, I'm down at Anglesey at the moment. Everyone, everyone walking along the street speaks. Hi, good day, great for a walk. Hi, you know, and it's just to acknowledge the people are there. Yeah. Um, as I say, it's a lonely time for people, especially without families. We had one lady a few years ago when they, she came to our women's friendship group Christmas luncheon, and it's a very festive day. And she said to me it was her only Christmas lunch and her only present because wow. she doesn't have a soul. Yeah. And that's that's really sort of stuck with me, Owen. And I think people have had a taste of what it's like to be alone, young yeah. and old. So um, just to have the spirit of Christmas to have friendship. That's a that's a lovely, lovely message, Helen. Um, we're going to have to wrap up there. Thank you so so much for the time you've given um, to us and and your beautiful messages and um, and the work that the Women's Friendship Group does year in and year out. My pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity too, and you have a lovely Christmas. You too. A safe Thanks, one. Thanks, Alan. All the best. Thank Bye. You.